everyone welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl Sid I am back with another video I am sitting in my living room floor um because I just finished spending time in the presence of the Lord um I just needed a refreshing I just needed him to well I just needed not him I didn't need him to do anything I just needed to sit in his presence and sit at his feet and just let my heart um become one with his and my mind become one with his that is a bug um let my mind and my heart become one with his and not really worry about an agenda or anything that I was trying to push. Um, I just really needed to just bask in his presence and just allow the issues of my heart to flow to him because he knows my heart. And that's what I said to him as I was in worship. Um, just saying like, Lord, you know my heart. You know exactly what I need in this moment. But I just ask that you come lay with me. Um, because today I just want to talk about um, fear-based faith and what that looks like in our lives. Because I recorded a video yesterday, but I was so jumbled up. Like, I looked back at the video and, <laughs> and I was trying to edit it. And I was like, what am I saying? I was just wanted to make sense um, as I shared this. But um, I brought some things to the Father today um, that I've been thinking about <clears throat> in my own life and just just trying to actually like figure some things out but as i'm like walking in this season i feel like i am so blind like i feel like previously not that i knew more but i feel like i feel like he was speaking more but not in a sense like there are some seasons where god will allow you he will say follow me <clears throat> follow me and those are the only two words that you will hear, but you're like, Father, where are we going? And it just reminded me so much of what the disciples were going through when they were following Christ. Not 90% of the time, they did not know the agenda. They did not know the syllabus. They did not know the calendar. They did not know the time, the place, or anything of what God was doing or what Jesus was doing, even though he was in the flesh and they were literally following him. And Jesus would literally leave go into the wilderness and meet back up with the disciples and they'd be like okay lord what were we supposed to be doing in that time and sometimes i feel like that i feel like lord okay you told me to do this i know this is my assignment i know this is what the last thing i heard from you and i'm going to continue to operate in that thing but what am i supposed to be doing and um as i was scrolling on tiktok earlier a girl kind of confirmed or kind of reaffirmed what what i was feeling and she was like in this season that you have to you have to follow the lord by the spirit you cannot allow your flesh to lead you or trying to figure things out or being over analytical you cannot rely on flesh at all because you'll try to figure these things out and a, a lot of things that god reveals to us or wants to show us is by his spirit it's not anything of our flesh and and that can be hard because our minds long or our minds thrive off of knowledge and understanding when our minds feel like they don't we don't understand something we seek to find an answer and if we don't receive the answer from god we go searching outside sources like go let me run here let me go here let me go here and and truly, we don't need to do that. Like, we have to 100% rely on God. Because in this season that I'm in, I'm going to share a little bit. Um, what God promised me, I'm going to leave with that. What God promised me, he began to speak back over me as I was in prayer. And just reminding me that he is faithful. And he is faithful to complete the things that he has started. And also, in that sense, we have to remember and always be reminded that God has it. He has it. He knows what he's doing. He knows the time. And he just reminded me uh, that he has us both. My fiance and I both where we need to be in this season. And it may not look like what I as assumed it to be. A lot of the things in our lives may not look like what we are expecting from God. And we have to realize that this in this walk, there's a lot of trust involved. There's a lot of letting go and surrendering, letting go and surrendering, letting go our ideas, our, our ideas and surrendering to the fact that God has a way. 
and in that it won't look like what we think it was it is supposed to look like it won't look like um or things that we have constructed in our minds because most of the things that we have hoped for or dreamed for or longed for is something that has been a picture that we have picked up along the way along our journey of what is marriage supposed to look like what is a relationship supposed to look like what is my financial state supposed to look like there's a lot of things that i'm like jump juggling in this season of trying to figure out like business going back to work going to work promoting at work like what am i <clears throat> like there's so so much of a delicate um, I don't want to, I don't want to say balance, but there's just so much that like goes through my mind. And I just wanted to just share because I don't want anyone to ever feel like once they, even like new believers or people who have been in the faith to think that just because you're in the season where you feel like, okay, God, I don't really know where, like up, down, left, right. Um, as before, um, just a couple months ago, I felt like, Lord, I felt like I was striving. Like, I'm like, Lord, I'm I'm walking in this faith thing. But if we always had that feeling, we would never actually rely and have to run back to God or stay at his feet. Because we're not even not feeling, but those those ups and downs, like the ebbs and flows of life, if we never had the lows, um, we how would we feel like we needed God? Like, how... I don't know how to how to how I'm trying to word that. I, I may I hope that makes sense. Um, but there were, I was ha I felt like there was so much more power behind me, <laughs> and I and that same power still is on down on the inside of me. But lately, I feel like I've been having to tap in even more. Like I feel like my mind is so um, jumbled and trying to juggle so many different things that I'm like center come back to center come back to christ and lay it at his feet and that's what i've been doing these last couple days these last couple weeks honestly um just keeping christ at the center because we can't do this life by ourselves it's impossible it is literally impossible and when i mean it's, it's impossible you can do it but your the battle in your mind is what what you will lose at you can you can try to succeed in this life or you can try to strive in this life without God. But the battle of the mind is what drags you back down in the end. And um, that's why I always continue to bring everything. I literally bring so much stuff to God. I'm like, Lord, this is where I am today. Like, this is how I'm feeling. And I was literally crying today. Um, and I had a reason to. Like, when I came into this... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I'm ready. Like, here I am. It's your daughter. I'm back. Let's have this, you know, let's have our time together. And, you know, I'm excited. Sometimes I have to force myself into his presence. Like, okay, Lord, here I am. I'm back. I really don't even know what to say today, but here I am. And I still allow myself to be available to God because I never know when he's going to speak or I never know when he's going to move. And when I just laid down... <laughs> I came to the living room in a journal and I read um, John chapter 21 today just to, um, <clears throat> I was listening to Pastor Verdict this morning, Stephen Verdict, and he was preaching on found fishing. And it talked about in this passage how Peter, um, like when he met Jesus for the first time, I believe, he was fishing. And, and at that time, he had fished all night and nothing. He had caught nothing. And then again, after Jesus was resurrected, this is his third appearance to the disciples after in his glorified body and being after coming back um, from the dead, he went back and met the disciples right where the, he met um, Peter and a few other disciples the first time fishing. And again, all night they were out fishing and they caught nothing. And then they let again, let their nets down and. And it was just like after this time, this is after Peter had denied Jesus three times. And, and, and Jesus went back to him. And instead of allowing Peter to deny him or having that same denial, he just went to him and asked him, do you love me? Three times he asked Peter, do you love me? Because I'm sure Peter went back to the place. This is what I'm feeling. This is how I felt and what I wrote down. Um, that Peter went back to the place where he first 
had his encounter with Jesus. And a lot of the times we just have to go back and not not in the sense of go back to what we know, go back to anything of that like that in that sense, but go back to the place where and sometimes that's within yourself, go back to the place where you found Jesus. Go back to the place where you felt like he heard you the, the most. Go back to the place where your meeting place and meet with him again because in that time Peter was able to reconnect with Jesus after he didn't after he denied him and betrayed him he was able to be re it says right here Jesus reinstates Peter that was the chapter this was chapter 21 um verses 15 and it was just going 15 through through 24 and it was just saying Peter do you love me then feed my sheep Peter do you love me do you love me Peter Simon son of John do you love me then take care of my sheep do what I asked you to do like bottom line bottom line and and even after that <clears throat> even after he was saying even after he continues to ask Peter do you love me feed my sheep feed my sheep and then he again he went back to the thing the first thing that he he told peter follow me the first the first thing that he said to him after he again in the same scenario the same scenario of when he caught multiple a large catch a large catch jesus still said to peter follow me follow me and even as I was laying in his presence today, he just re he just spoke the same words. Like, did I not tell you that this would happen? Did I not tell you that I will make this happen for you? Did I not tell you that no pieces will be missing? When I promised you your union, I said, look at your ring. There was, a, like I said, there was a ring on my finger that I was wearing in faith. And it had chocolate. It was a chocolate diamond ring that my mama gave me from i can't remember i can't remember whatever the case but one of the stones had fallen out of the ring of the the faith ring that i was wearing um that's what i'm gonna call it uh but the the ring that i was wearing on my um ring finger as a sign of my faith and and i remember i was laying right here in this living room when he said that your union is coming and no pieces will be missing no pieces will be missing and sometimes the the life looks contrary to the word of god life will always look contrary to the word of god that's where faith comes in but not the faith that will have you walking on eggshells we won't know every move we won't we won't that is why peter went back to what he knew he went back to where he found jesus fishing he went back to what he knew and where he found Jesus the first time. And Jesus just reminded him of the same word that he spoke. Nothing of what God says will change no matter where you are in life. No matter the the place you are in life. No matter your job. No matter your situation. Your, your relationship status. What God said is what God will perform. And... And what I, what I meant by the beginning of having this fear-based faith is thinking that every decision that I make um, will either delay or deny the will of God for my life. Like, I'm like, Lord, I don't want to take this turn because I don't know if I don't know. I don't want to take it there because then what if what if I'm supposed to be doing this and da, da, da. like the enemy wants you to be in the place that you are so frantic, not wanting to make any decision. And... <laughs> And I was just reminded again uh, yesterday, I think that was yesterday, of how nothing we can do can do, can mess up the will of God. God allows us in on the creative process. I've said that before. He allows us in as long as we keep him at the center. It's not that we can't do any wrong or we can't make the wrong decisions, but he knows our heart. And if our intentions, I believe that if our intentions are, there's no decision that i'm not saying that father help me to phrase this how i am like trying to say it without sounding contradictory to your word or anything that you who jesus
trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. There is most things in this life you will not understand until you look back and say, okay, God, that's what you were doing. That's what you were doing. We don't always know. I'm in the season, I'm in the season of my life where it, of the unknown. And it's not like a scary unknown. It's an unknown of, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know you're up to something. God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you're going to do it. Trusting that every step I take is orchestrated by him. That is what I'm trying to say. Trusting and leaning not on the fact that I don't understand that he's, I don't understand what you're doing, Lord. I don't understand. But I'm going to acknowledge you because you said that if I lean not on my own understanding, but I acknowledge you and you will direct my path. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I really needed to tie that together. <laughs> and that's what I mean. Every step you take, every step you take, God will orchestrate that thing. Even when you don't understand, I'm like, God, I don't even know if that's you. <laughs> God, that's you. That's you. Because <laughs> sometimes it feels like that. You feel like, man, I don't know if this guy, but I pray to God that it is. Um, but y'all, I have to help my son with his homework, um, wrap things up for the evening, and I will catch you guys next video. Bye.